Hi everyone, and welcome to Pathophysiology 2, Biology 2519. I'm Dr. Sarah Wrigley McDonald, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. The purpose of this video is to show you where to find resources for the course, to help you navigate our course main page, which is what you're looking at right now, and the additional resources that are available for you. We're going to start in the Start Here folder. So there's an instructor introduction, so it's a little bit about me, my background, kind of how I came to be teaching online, contact information and office hours, the video message is what you're watching right now, uh, there's a link to your syllabus, and then a link to the course guide. So the syllabus is really like the contract I have with you regarding the course. So here's your syllabus. So there's my email address, again you can click on that and email me directly. There's course assessments, so you have 20% of your final mark coming from Prep U Mastery Quizzes. These are open book quizzes you can do anytime, and I'll show you about those in a little bit. You have a midterm and a final exam. Both are online, closed book, and invigilated. And all other assessments have to be completed before you write your final exam. So your midterm and quizzes have to be done before the final exam, to count towards your final grade. There's your grading scheme, a little bit about the exam and vigilation process. There's your textbook and links to purchase your textbook. So you can get a hard copy of the text through the UNB bookstore. It is quite a bit more expensive than just the ebook online. So the ebook is available for a lower price. Uh, so again, about 170 Canadian plus tax and you can download it immediately through uh, Lip and Cotton. So here's the course outline. So again, I have it broken up into eight modules, which I do for all my courses. So the first four modules are going to be assessed on the midterm, and that's a 90-minute closed book exam. All of, the, uh, all of the modules will be on the final exam, with 30% of the points coming from modules 1 to 4, and 70% from 5 to 8. Here's some important deadlines. So these deadlines are important to keep in mind when you're building your schedule. Because, unfortunately, sometimes life gets in the way of our plans and we do have to drop courses. There's academic integrity. So again, this is the policy for UNB and certainly something that you should read. So I'm going to go back to the Start Here folder again. So this time I'm going to click on the course guide. So this document is really going to be a main component of how you navigate the course. So there's a how to get started, exam information, and then needing help. Each of these links will take you to another document with a lot of really helpful information. So in order to get started, we read the syllabus, which we just did. You watch the video you're watching right now. Uh, there's a study tip video here as well. So this is a video I use for all of my courses. It's about 20 minutes and it goes through all of my very top study tips. Make a schedule. It's very important given that this is an open entry course because so, you do have a full six months, but it's easy to lose track of time unless you set yourself a schedule. So I have a link here to downloadable Word file with two examples of schedules. I don't really recommend anyone try and do this course in less than kind of 10, 12 weeks. But if you have to, there's an example schedule there for you. How to navigate the course content. So I want you to read the PowerPoint files. The PowerPoint files are what I used for the YouTube lectures. So these are full video recorded lectures and they're available to you at any time. So these are the two main things that will help you know the course content. So again, the PowerPoints and the YouTube. There are additional resources there for you. So there's objectives, videos, case studies, journal articles. And so I do recommend that you try those resources to start with and determine which ones help you. Uh, they're not gonna work for everybody. Some people are not gonna enjoy them or find them useful. Other people will, but at least try them. So following that, study your notes, rewatch the lecture, and then do your prep you quiz. 
So quizzes are open book, but as always, I recommend that you try and do it without the book. So review the content, study it, and try and do the quiz without the book, because then you're going to get a good sense of how well you know the content. So here's your textbook again. There's a link where you can purchase directly. Now this is the course code. So when I show you prep you in a few minutes, you're going to need this course code to get access to our specialized quizzes. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the course point platform has a lot of really great resources and there's a PDF file here that can help guide you through that registration uh, process and accessing the resources. So here's your YouTube playlist. So again, if you click on there, it'll take you right to YouTube. And so what we're seeing here is the YouTube playlist, all right? So 2519, here are all your lectures. You'll notice some of them are shorter, some of them are longer, all right? This one's only 24 minutes. Um, I try to keep them sometimes under an hour. It doesn't always work that way. But the nice thing about this is you have the option of, you know, watching for five minutes, 20 minutes, the full file, and coming back multiple times if you need to. So again, we do have those additional resources and you will find them in each modular folder on Brightspace. And lastly, I want you to enjoy, right? There's lots of great content here. There's lots of really interesting uh, information. What you're gonna find pretty quickly is that I'm a big geek. I love this stuff. And so I do get quite excited about the different content. So now we're gonna backtrack. Right, so this is the how to get started section of that course guide. So we're going to go back, back into course guide, and we're going to click on exam information. So this contains the questions that I get all the time from students, right? How do I best prepare myself for the exam? Right, here's your answer. What's the breakdown of the exam? How many questions? How long? Is it closed book? Is it open book? So I have all that information here for you. And in addition, I've started providing all of my students the full list of possible short answer questions. So this link here will take you to an HTML file that contains every possible short answer question for the exam. So there will be a section for modules one through four, and that will be only for the midterm exam. And then the short answer questions for the final will contain all of them. And so when you're studying this, you're going to notice that it's quite a long list. And so don't get overwhelmed, but it's really designed to be, you know, a heads up for the final, but also a really great study guide for you. Don't use it exclusively. I have had students only study the short answer questions and not do very well. It's a great resource as one part of your study strategy. So PowerPoints, lectures, short answer questions, objectives if you like, all of those are really great resources for you. And you'll notice that a lot of your short answer questions are objectives, directly from your objectives list. So again, both exams closed book, online, invigilated, you'll see all the same information here, the number of points, the number of questions, all of that. So with booking exams, you want to book them at least two weeks before you want to write. This is especially important if you were doing this course over the summer. Our summertime is our busiest time by far, and we need the full two weeks. So again, that's 10 business days from the time you submit your exam request, and I'll show you what that is in a minute, and the time you want to write. If you have to have your grade in by a certain date, maybe you're applying for another program, maybe you're graduating, you have to book for, or plan for, at least another two weeks. So make sure that you request your exam two weeks before you want to write it, and that you're writing your exam at least two weeks before you need that grade to appear on a transcript. If you need a physical copy of the transcript, you have to allow additional time. It's usually about three to five business days. And so be very mindful of this. You don't want to get to the end of your course plan or two weeks before you have to have that mark submitted to another institution and simply run out of time. It's all about planning. You need to plan ahead. So for invigilation, 
this sounds intimidating, but it isn't. So if you can get to a UMB campus, a main campus, mainly Fredericton or St. John, they do offer free invigilation. And so you would simply click the exam request form and indicate what day and what location you wanted to write. There are set days and times here, so keep that in mind. If you are close to the UMB Moncton campus, there is an invigilator that you can use. Um, it is for a fee, but CEL can help you with that. If you're not near Fredericton and St. John, don't panic. I have students writing all around the world, and we make these invigilation arrangements all the time. So you do have to find your own invigilator. Most will charge a fee. It's pretty rare if they don't. So it has to be at a post-secondary institution, so you're talking about a college or a university. Keep in mind that if you're in a situation where there are a few different places that you can go to, you might want to call and call around and ask about a price. I know some places in Toronto are charging $100 per exam and others are charging $25 or $30. And so it certainly pays to shop around. So if you are in the situation where you can't go to one of these three locations, then you do want to have a look at this document. That document will guide you through the process of looking for an invigilator. So it'll tell you who would be and would not be eligible uh, to work as an invigilator. And really, this is the reason why we have the two full week waiting period. Because it does take time to communicate with an invigilator who's off-site. There's a lot of emails that have to be exchanged back and forth, a contract that has to be signed, you know, different things like that. If you have any questions about this process or about an exam that you've requested, you can email exam at umb.ca. I don't facilitate this. They do. And so they're the best people to ask. Uh, I'm not notified of an exam request until the exam is confirmed which is when you get an email confirming, yes, you're going to write your exam on this day, this time, I get the same notification you do. Before that, I don't see that paperwork. So these are the guys that you want to contact. And lastly, when everything's said and done, if you want to request a transcript, the link's right there. So again, that's our exam information, but we do have one other file to check. And that is the need help. So at some point in the course, you're going to hit one of these things, right? You have a question about course content, marks, study advice. That's me. So you can email me. Again, I do my best to respond to emails within 24, 48 hours during the week and Monday morning if it's sent over the weekend. I try not to work at all in the evenings or on the weekends because I do have two kids, a husband and two fluffy puppies. And so I like to keep my personal time separate, as we all do. Uh, I don't have a UMB office, so I don't have a UMB office number, but contact me by email and I'm happy to book an appointment with you to either chat by phone or online in our virtual classroom. If you have questions about course payments, registration, withdrawals, and extensions, this is the section you're going to be looking at. For payment and registration, you want to talk to CEL. Right? There's phone numbers, emails, all of that. Course withdrawal. So again, sometimes life takes us on a detour. So if you do have to withdraw from the course, be mindful of the deadlines that we saw in the syllabus. That's a link to them there as well. So with course extensions, in rare and extenuating circumstances, I can grant up to 30 days as the extension. Um, if you have a situation like this, you can email me and CC online at UMB. There's no fee for this and then you'll get an email with confirmation. If you feel that you may need more than 30 days and you would have medical and compassionate reasons for needing the extension and can provide documentation, then your best course of action would be to go through the student advocate. So Wilfred Langmaid is our student advocate and he's really great to work with He's on the student side. He wants to make sure that within policy guidelines and within the rules of the university that you have the best experience. And so if you feel that you do need more than 30 days and you do have medical or compassionate grounds,
then I really encourage you to contact him. And of course, if I get documentation from him saying that you've been approved, um, then I'm more than happy to extend your course longer. And sometimes, given a circumstance, you may start with a 30-day extension, and if there are medical and compassionate grounds, I may advise you to contact Wilfred um, so that you can proceed with a longer extension. So our last section here is technical issues. So I've been running this course online now for about four years. There's very few technical issues. But if you have one, <clears throat> and it relates to UMB platform, which is your Brightspace, D2L, your My UMB homepage, or your email access, these are the resources you can use. So phone numbers, if you have long distance and in Canada, and then there's the email if you're outside. So with the Lippincott Course Point Prep U, uh, which is all one system, and I'll show you that uh, next, here is the purchasing assistance, here's technical assistance, um, the online assistance, this is a chat room. So when you click there, you can choose kind of chat with an agent. Um, I've used that multiple times and it's really nice. It works very well. And as you're chatting, you can be doing other things, which is very handy. All right, so that's the end of the course guide. What I'm gonna go do now is back up a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go back in here. And I'm going to log into our textbook. So now I'm at the point. So this is the page you're going to come to when you click that link. You'll be clicking the buy now link down here if you're not purchasing the hard copy from the bookstore. So this will give you instant access. So when you purchase it, you're going to be asked to make an account with an email address. And when you are done logging in, you'll click return user like I just did, log in, so now what I'm going to do is switch to the student view, and so when you log in you can choose to click on course content, so this is going to show you the various resources for the, co the course, so here's your vital source bookshelf, so this is where you'll get your ebook. You can also click down here. So there's quick start guides here to help get you started and help you guide, help guide you through the content, learning objectives, animations, journal articles. In addition to the course centered resources, you also have more general nursing clinician resources. So there's heart, um, heart and breath sounds, so professional roles and responsibilities. Uh, there's a DocuCare link down here that won't work for you because we don't have that incorporated in the, in the class. But you can look at the resources by resource type or by chapter. So this is a little bit easier if you want just one chapter at a time. This is easier if you want to look at one resource at a time. So when you click on Prep U, this is going to be our quizzes. So again, if you think about the, the syllabus, we had 20% of our final grade allocated for these, these quizzes. And so when you come in, you won't have all these courses listed, right? Um, you'll be clicking join a class. And that code that's on the syllabus is what you'll input. And that'll give you access to our Pathophysiology 2 course point course. When you log in, this is what you'll see. Right? How am I doing? Assignments, practice quizzes. You're really going to be focusing on assignments. And so what you'll see, unfortunately I can't rearrange these. I guess I can every time. There we go. Um, so you're going to see a quiz for every chapter that we cover. And so when you click on them, you're going to be given options. So you're going to notice right away that it's current mastery and target mastery. So these work a little bit differently than other quizzes. It's not about trying to get every question right to achieve a certain percentage. You're going to be asked to continually do quizzes and do questions until you achieve a target mastery of three. Essentially, all that means is that you have demonstrated a certain mastery or knowledge of that content for this chapter in order to get that third level mastery. Once you've achieved that mastery, you've completed your assignment, you can move on to the next chapter. 
if you achieve the target mastery for all of the chapter quizzes, you will automatically get a full 20% towards your final grade. So as long as you have that target mastery achieved, you get full grades. So if you click Start Quiz, it'll take you through a few different things. These are more case-based, um, clinical situation type questions. They're really great for preparing you for the NCLEX exam, which is the nursing licensing exam. And so I'm just going to click through a couple. I'm not reading these, so don't judge me if I have them wrong. <laughs> right? So once you complete these, so once you complete these, what they're going to do is look and see what happened. Right? I got all five wrong, which is apparently really bad luck. So, uh, so now it's going to show you what you got right and what you got wrong and why. So it's one of the things I really like about this quizzing software. You know, it shows you the full question, it shows you what the correct answer was and the explanation for why. So you can click here and get the full explanation. And so you're not just taking a quiz, it's a really amazing study tool. So I do really encourage you to do this. So again, I can go back, oops, All right? I can take another quiz, I can see my overall performance, and I can see my quiz history. So what I do as the instructor, I come in and I look at your quiz history, and I can see, okay, you, you took this one, right? Quiz number two, quiz number one. Um, oh, these are things that I was playing with before. This is from a different course. And so I'll see that you've completed all of your quizzes and you've achieved that level three mastery for everything. And then you're all set. So again, when you click assignments, if I had achieved my mastery for chapter 13, it would say complete right here. So you're not going to see these marks automatically update on Brightspace. Instead, I only manually input these after you have written your final exam. So in order to ensure that you get full marks, you simply come to this page, click on assignments, and make sure that for every single chapter, you have complete beside it. And then you get your full 20%. So with that, I'm going to go back to Brightspace. And I want to give you a very, very brief overview of the resources up here for Brightspace. Now, if you're new to Brightspace, you might want to, whoops, wrong one, this one, here we go. You might want to click the video overview. So all of these resources are really handy. Here's tutorials and resources right there. So you might want to take a tour if you haven't used D2L or Brightspace before. So our home, I always tell students to click on the home button if you're somewhere and you've got something in front of you you don't recognize in the course, click home and it'll bring you back here. So from this page, we see all of our modular folders. We see our midterm and final folder. So when you click this, don't panic, right? You're not gonna automatically open an exam. The exams are password protected, so you can't accidentally open them. And down here, there's a course evaluation and a link for transcripts. So in each of these folders, you're going to see a PowerPoint file, a PDF file, your objectives, YouTube lecture playlist, same link as you saw in the course uh, guide, and there's folders for videos, case studies, and journal articles. Now there's a lot of content in each folder, but I really just want you to use the, the slides, the lecture, the objectives come highly recommended as well. However, these resources are here if you choose to use them, right? So again, they're optional. Again, I'm going to hit home and I'll come back here. So that's our home button. Content will give you the same idea, different view, right? So from here, I can click table of contents and it'll show me everything. So some people like this view better. Some people find it too confusing. So whatever works for you. Under assessments, here you're going to find your grades. You'll also find, you can get to your midterm and final through this link as well and the course evaluation surveys down here. For communication, we have a chat function so you can chat with me if I'm online, and a discussion board. For resources, I'm not really gonna use these. Uh, for libraries, great link to the UNB resources. Um, and again, we already talked about this one. If you wanna email me, you can just click up here and email me. And guys, with that, we're done. 
So I want to end by saying I look forward to working with you. As always, if you have any question, please don't hesitate to reach out by email. And I hope you enjoy the course.